another episode of The Diplomats. If you only knew how hard it was to start these things with the two dope heads. Anyways, we're brought to you by diplomacybriefing.com, which offers you all the latest information on Avalon Hills Diplomacy. We're talking about the Season 5 Nexus Finals. We've got two seasons left we're here to talk about the spring of 1910 but before we do i just thought i would go over the uh, winter of 09 which we speculated about uh, uh nothing surprising there except maybe the army by comp in turkey agreed yeah agreed. I think we expected the army. I just, I don't know. I'm just obsessed with fleets, but yeah, we expected the army, I think. All right. And we spent a whole podcast talking about how maybe Germany wouldn't win and Austria might be able to do it. And then we have spring 1910. The return of the conch. <laughs> That's what I'm calling it. <laughs> could win no he can't win but he did what i suspected uh and that hand thought he might not do uh, or at least speculated he wouldn't do it which was he took hands earlier advice about italy and he applied it to himself he buried his deep heart of resentment and then Put it, put it in at the right time. This has to be devastating to Austria, folks. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's already posted in the forums that he's just, he's glad it's over. <laughs> it's just, it's been real stressful. I've been in two finals. They are very stressful. And I can't imagine playing the 1910 because I've never got that far. So <laughs> it's, yeah, especially as Austria, especially as Austria. Um, I mean, two things. First of all, I wouldn't say that. Uh, I never expected Conk not to do this. I guess I just hoped that he wouldn't at a certain point because I have this huge stock of like Austria's number one fan underwear that I was planning on selling and the market for that has now crashed. Um, but uh, I mean, yeah, you're right about him. You know, he, this wasn't in the, the first level of the Dungeon of Resentment where the, uh, you know. Dungeon of Resentment. There right. wasn't the first level, you know, with like the, uh, the beautiful, you know, uh, you know, vaulted ceilings. It wasn't in the second level with the, like skeletons in the closet. This was in the deepest level with like the flows of lava and like demons like having sex with each other. And he just got, you know, vintage 1860 wine out and poured it out for himself. I guess it would be vintage 1901 or whatever. Um, so well done, Conk. Well done. You ruined uh, someone's life. Yep. And he will finish not just with more centers than Russia, but almost triple. And if Russia loses one, which actually Russia will potentially lose one. Potentially. Quintuple. Maybe Kron gets the A quintuple plus for being quintuple the centers of Russia. <laughs> too little, too late. Yeah. Getting Greece is kind of interesting. I, I can understand from Italy's point of view that they might want to break that tie, but I don't know. For some reason, I would think Italy would want Greece for itself. I will give he might have made a deal. I thought he might have made a deal that uh, Conk will go to Romania and agenda Bulgaria, maybe Italy can maybe get Greece still. Yeah, he can't get it without him willingly giving it up, though. Yeah, I have to say though, like there's a bit of a pyrrhic victory here for uh, for Austria um, in the sense that what the well, what I'm let me finish. It's uh, a pyrrhic defeat. Uh, uh, right. Well, whatever. Maybe the, that's not the right term. But there's a bit of a, a, a moral victory in the sense that 
I feel like showing Kong absolute trust at the end kind of blunts the spiteful revenge. You know, like, I feel like if he had just done something, something more to Kong, it just, it makes it seem Kong's stab a little more petty. Um, and I think that, like, the, the spittle that you get to throw in the face of, like, the spittle you get thrown in the face of the, the purists of the game. Um, now those purists, instead of reviling Conk and him able to just kind of suck up that hatred, um, they're all gonna, just going to jump on Austria for his stupidity for trusting Conk. So, well, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I kind of feel, I find it hysterical that at the end of the game, even though Russia and Turkey could never work together, they have found common cause in working against Austria with Italy. I mean, Austria played that dance with his good dogs for a long time. The dogs mm. bit back. Yeah. I mean, I'm a little sad. I'm, I'm sad to see Austria's chances go. I, I think you played a great game. Um, I, even, I even don't really fault him for we're trying to appeal to Conk's romantic side. Um, I don't fault Conk for going down into the, you know, uh, eighth circle of his wine cellar and getting a bottle out either. But, um, you know, he went down playing, playing in a style and I, I really respect that. Um, so I want to ask you this. Does Austria help Italy? You know, Austria is the one that stabbed first, Italy stabbed back, then they stabbed each other, and who knows who started it. It's like the Hatfields and McCoys. But if Austria is totally out of it, to get Greece, to get Greece, to get them both to, to Italy. It's possible. Um, at least Greece, because maybe he doesn't want Turkey to have it just on principle. Um, but yeah, Italy can tie it up with Liverpool and Greece. And then he wins. Well, okay. <laughs> I mean, I haven't done the math, fellas, but, uh, you know, I know we haven't talked about our board leader yet, which is sort of why he's doing so well. No one seems to talk about him, but Germany took breaths. Yeah. It yep. doesn't look like it can be taken back unless England helps. He also uh, might help because it didn't go directly to Spain. Yeah, he also walked into Belgium. Right. So, I but mean, Italy he tied walked into Belgium because he yeah. went left Belgium, which means England can now take Norway with no problem because he disbanded Skagerrak instead of Denmark. So Norway is vulnerable. There's going to be an even trade for Belgium and Norway. Still no one ever took Helgeland. Nope. The entire game. Sorry to jump all over the place, but if you want to talk about where Germany's going to end, it really depends on if England helps Italy back into Brent's. If he does, Germany stays at nine. All right, so the key, the key problem for Germany was disbanding because now he can't protect Norway, but he still would have been on the knife's edge of a guess between Norway and Denmark. Correct. Yeah. But he's, yeah, I mean, clearly uh, North Sea can take Denmark. Oh, sorry. North Sea can take Norway. So, so Germany, although up two right now, will be up one at 10. Yeah. And so it really, really lies on England and Austria. What other center can Germany lose is Brest, right? Yes. Germany for sure will be on nine, oh, even oh. if he loses Brest. No, I mean, if he gets Brest, he's at 10. How does he lose Brest? Uh, English support, uh, Gascony with uh, English Channel. So you, don't think, you think the English are okay with an army in Wales? I don't know. It, might be arranged, it might not be, but um, I it's just it's, it's that slim margin of possibility. It, it's it's highly unlikely that Italy will win, but it solely 
rests upon either you know, England helping him and Austria helping him or Turkey walking out of Greece. Yeah. I think I'm back to my determinism of the episode before last where I said that there's a mathematical possibility of Germany losing, but the sociological probability is zero. Mm-hmm. Um, well, episode, we've seen some interesting fall 10 moves and we yeah. don't really know the diplomatic situation uh, behind the scenes. I think the thing is like, you know, the episode after that, there was a combination of my love of Austria's play that got my hopes up. And then also your <laughs> just relentless bullying in order to keep the ratings up, you know, um, which made me question that, but yeah, I'm going to say the sociological probability really is zero. Um, I just don't see these guys getting it together enough to stop them. The only unit that matters is Mid-Atlantic. Mid-Atlantic helps Gascony back in the breast that keeps Germany down and enables Italy to tie, either with Greece or Trieste. With Greece, it can get it with Austrian or Turkish support. So he only has to swing one power there. But it's a diplomacy thing. It's not a, like, all Germany has to do is hold. Uh, So... But it really just depends on England, I think. I do like the snazzy little German move into Silesia with Russian support. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's great because Austria was trying to load up against Germany. Um, God, like, Bohemia has just been his uh, albatross all game, hasn't it? Now he's stuck there again. and um, It's a good lesson. I I think it's a good lesson for our listeners and for ourselves. If you're Austria, I don't think you should move to Bohemia unless you already have Tyrolia and Silesia. Um, you're just going to get stuck there. Unless you're blocking someone, uh, it's not a great move. Austria picks up Warsaw, and that's about it. Because yeah. it can't do anything really to Germany. So it's better off just tapping Silesia and Moscow and then supporting right in. I don't know. That's hard, too. Germany picks up Warsaw because Silesia has to support Munich. I would say so. Why doesn't Berg? I guess Burgundy has to cover uh, Belgium while Holland covers. Well, that's a little bit tricky. That is tricky. You don't want to bounce out of Belgium. Right? Right. I guess they mutually bounce in Belgium. No, they don't. They can't do that. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, what what does Germany do with the Holland situation then? Well, it's an either or situation. England can only take Norway or Holland. Right. It doesn't matter, I guess. He'll take Norway just because it's a sure thing. Yeah, whereas Germany could possibly block him, so he won't do that. Um, That's another way for Italy. If Italy can't get England on board, it can always try to sneak into Belgium, hoping for it to move out. But I don't see it moving out. Yeah, I won't. I don't think it will. There's no point. Take it. Yeah, there's no point. I mean, Burgundy might move back to Belgium, so yeah, there's no real point. Yeah. But at least Paris open, so. I mean, I would, I feel like if Conk, if if the pleasure, if if, if, uh, the fact that Austria showed him absolute trust has left a bad taste in his mouth, like he hasn't created enough of a scandal and that is his object. And I always kind of project a little bit of my own persona, right, onto Conk and others at times, but. If he wanted to create a true scandal, yeah, he might throw it at Italy. Um, Any chance Conk pulls back and pulls an ultimate Conk? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, do you guys, could you see Conk just wanting to create a, a stir and throwing to Italy? No, no. Could he throw back to Austria? <laughs> he could walk it back. I'll pull back completely? Well, would that allow Austria to win? Well, 
so yeah. yeah. I kind of have a doubts about that, but that would definitely cause a stir. That would be quite a piece of theater with uh, EVR's kind of funereal posts in the public chat. And I think Germany makes a play on Greece. I don't know how he can pull back and help Austria at the same time. You'd have to support it in Bulgaria and then you take Bulgaria. Like, you can't just walk out of Greece because Italy's going to push it. I don't see Italy going after Trias. Greece is just a closer, short thing, I would say. But it's, it's, there's options. There's lots of options. This depends on where he finds the best deals. But getting English support to keep Germany at nine instead of 10 is the number one thing. It, without anything on breast, Germany's at 10. There's, there's just no way to get to 10. 10's a win. It's all on England. It's all on England. Yeah. And I just don't see any indication that England is. Wait, but what if what if Conk throws Greece to what if Conk th what if uh, the Ottomans throw Greece to Italy? So Italy's gonna go down on Brest, and he's gonna go up in Liverpool, so he's gonna go to eight with Greece. So he needs Brest for nine, um, and that's uh, or, Tri or Trieste. Or Trieste. Those are but, the only two centers. Or London. I mean, if we're talking about throwing centers, right. England can throw London. You know, if if Italy manages to get three different powers to throw to him in the last year, is that twelve? <laughs> I'm, I'm 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 getting in the truck and I'm driving like the forty five minutes to Portland to shake uh, <laughs> to shake Tom's hand, and he'll probably try try to get away from me because of COVID, and I'll just force him anyway. Um, well, this is my understanding of what happened in season one. And I know it happened in season two a little bit with Super Weddy playing Germany, essentially figuring out how he wanted to help, you know, at the end. <laughs> no, that's not what season one. What happened was there was this wonderful guy named Leukemia, uh, mm -hmm. all caps. Oh, Stitches loves him too, right? Stitches? Uh, it's probably the, my man, no. I'm gonna say my words on that one. Well, he's a he's a he's a he's French. He's one of my countrymen. He's a little combative, um, but he was just fucking whooping Umble's ass, and uh, Umble started a private chat with the mods, mocking him, and then very like ethically dubious, like talking with the ad with the game master and stuff, and then Le kind of that got out to leukemia. Leukemia is a very he's an artist. He's French, he's very passionate, and he like quit in a rage. Um, and then- uh, the final? He, he, quit. Huh? he quit? He quit. He quit, he just quit the game. He stopped playing. He was the board leader. He, he had 11 did centers. He MR, or did someone have to replace him or? No. Just left him out, NMR. They just left. And so losers, the infamous losers who was Germany ended up winning. Um, and good for him, he just kind of, was quiet and let leukemia and uh umble hate each other um and it's really funny because to this day umble like in his twisted mind is like claims this is some kind of victory even though he just lost anyway um well, but it was yeah. it was an fg alliance um there was no stopping leukemia's win other than throwing centers to germany and he was willing to do that and so no matter what, leukemia is going to lose. Um, yeah, I don't know about that. I think if leukemia stayed in the game, I don't think right. I don't think All right, back to this game. I'm sure oh. leukemia is a very interesting character. Uh, <laughs> yes. All right. Il me manque leukemia revient. Okay, uh, German. I mean, I can't imagine German playing a a better round, uh, a better set of moves than what he's done. Uh, the error wasn't a disband. Right. So for 1910, Germany gets a what grade superstition? Oh, I love it. He, he gets right every place again. Uh, I'll guess Tom once again. So 
I would give him an A. He's in, he's in well position to get back to 10. He needs a at least a three-person alliance, including England and Italy, to stop him. So assuming England's on board, Italy will still have to garner support from Austria or Turkey to win. So um, Italy's, or Turkey, or Germany's in a great position. So I'm going to give an A. And? Um, he definitely gets an A. I mean, he walked into Belgium. Uh, do you get, I wonder, do you, do you think Germany and Turkey are in significant uh, contact or like, do you think Germany has, is, is he like all over the board? I, I don't know. I guess it's impossible to know, but it'd be interesting. If, is he, I wonder if he's just someone who sits there and puts a little drop of poison in the well and sits back or if he's active everywhere. Um, but regardless, yeah, it's a really good play. He's always going to keep communication open. Yeah, Germany's pretty good about uh, when I played him. He was very good about contacting you, even when you're his opponent. He would still talk to you. Um, the problem was he was always practical, so there was just there was no smoke and mirrors. This is just the way it is. This is the way things are going to be. Um, right. That that works pretty well in the finals, though. In some it ways. does work well in the finals, but in a in a place where I was willing to spare his life. Um, he just could not see why that would tactically make sense. So he didn't take any offer I had, even though I was genuine. So yeah. I think there'd be a disconnect between him and Conk's play. But to say that they're not in contact, I bet they would be because Conk likes to talk and he'll talk. So I like how I mean, both of you twist every question into some personal animosity of the past. For hearts, that's what we do. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I guess. What, what's relevant there for me is just the question of throwing to Italy or not. Like, do, do, do the Ottomans want the Italians to win or the Germans to win, or are they in it for their own glory? Germany, A+. Plus. England. Um, I don't – why did – yeah, I'm a little – it's the it's same kind of – yeah, I don't know. You, you go first, Keith. I have to think about this one a little bit. Uh, I was curious about leaving leaving Belgium so easily when he had to pretty much prioritize. Yeah. Um, it's like, yeah, it wasn't a it wasn't a bad idea because otherwise he would have bounced in north. Oh, actually, no, he broke support to Norway, so it would have succeeded without leaving Belgium at all. Yeah. Um. I don't know. Uh, I, I guess what he was trying to do, and he pretty much traded Belgium for Norway. He's probably going to lose Belgium no matter what, but he, yeah. really, he, he really could have put more pressure on on Germany by taking North. That leaves him exposed to, to Italy, though, so it just depends on what his priorities were. From a defensive point of view, this hedges his, benef bet, hedges his bets between Italy and Germany, but at this point, it doesn't matter. Um, you just want to stop who you don't like the most because it's real yeah you know, i think he did a 50 50. he's i think he was like too scared that italy would walk into london i guess i guess um yeah it's not a great move it's not i mean maybe he just really really wants norway so he's putting everything he has into that or i don't know but he could still get norway yeah exactly i i don't like i said i think he just was too scared to leave london um, which if you're not going to kind of defend Wales, you're going to lose London or Liverpool. So it's the point. I mean, Italy only has time to take one. If he wants, he can take it. Just go for it. All right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's pretty weak move. I don't know. What do you think is the grade? If his, if, it depends on his motive because if you go into mid-Atlantic instead of Spain, is his way of going against Germany and taking North is his way of bringing Germany down one for sure then I would give it a good B plus just because it covers all the boxes in the, the most practical sense. Um, I think he could have done more damage by moving London, but uh, it just depends on his motives. If he just wants the best showing for him, then mm. he's probably, he probably did the best. But if he but, wants someone from winning, then he could have done it better in other ways. Even if he wanted the best showing, he could have had Norway and maybe also Belgium and Spain. Right. Yeah, I'm not getting it. 
Yeah, I'm going to give him a D. Sorry, again. Poor England. I might just skip the interview with him just because I don't want to, like, look him in the eye. <laughs> you sure? What do you think? What's your grade? Me? I... He gave him a D. D is in dog. Bad mm -hmm. dog. Right. And that's what you mm -hmm. gave? No, I gave him a B. I, I thought it was a, still a fairly solid set of moves. Uh, it really just depends on the motive. I'm going to give him an A. Let me tell you why. What? You want to talk about the dungeon of resentment? England's got a dungeon of resentment. He now... Look. Take Norway. Give up London. Give up Liverpool. I think that's... I think England's motivation here was to survive to the end. He doesn't like what Italy did. But he really blames what's happened to him in this game on Germany. Yeah, that could be... And he does not want Germany to profit from what Germany did. Because, and he can get Italy too. And he essentially trades Norway for Belgium. Fine. I think that's what's going to happen. I don't know it, but it is a great suspicion of mine. Okay, but if you're going to give him an A, then shouldn't he have stayed in Belgium? For those motives, if if those were his motives, why did he? Why not just stay in Belgium and and move uh, London to the North Sea? Because Belgium's safe. Because you know that that yeah. Italy has to tap Burgundy, so yeah. you have to support up, and that would put Italy in the Burgundy. Yeah, giving up Paris. There's not a good explanation for that, other than he's trying to impress you, hand, and get you on the interview with him by creating a little drama and artistry in the movement. <laughs> Just, you can't give him an A. Ed, if that's, his, if that's your interpretation, you can't give him an A, honestly. He would have, he should have gone London to the North Sea and stayed in Belgium. You gotta, you I'll cannot. Give him, I'll give him an incomplete. Let's see what <laughs> happens in 10. Okay, so yeah, maybe he'll finish his coursework in six months. You know, I've taught for a while that never happens. It's just an F, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. All right, Italy's grade. Hmm. I mean, he might win. Still. It's so slim. It's really slim, but I mean, it's just for the spring. Just for the spring. I like the, the move to Wales. I think it was a dare. Uh, he has his best thinking that he would pull back to Belgium to disband. And England did the same thing. Everyone moved out, assuming Belgium was going to be pushed. And mm -hmm. here Germany did. It just said, I'm just going to try to walk in. They did. So I think Tonga out thought again. He went to an extra level that wasn't there. Uh, he, can't, he, he did it over and over and over this game, where he just walks out of centers or walks into the wrong way, thinking that it's safe. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame he didn't support into Burgundy. That would have been cool. about that, but if he did that, then he'd lose Spain to England, right? But he's this is Spain part of into... the idea maybe I was wrong about England uh, and why I changed my grade to an incomplete. Yeah, I, I would have. I think it's a bit of – I mean, it's easy to say in hindsight, but – if he's going to walk out of Brest, might want to support into Burgundy because that gives you a pretty good – that gives, that means you can take Paris because you can break the support with the channel and then take Paris. If I was going to walk out of Brest, I would have supported into Burgundy. Also – From Marseille. Gascony supports Marseille to Burgundy. Exactly, yeah. Uh, I mean, again, though, I'm, I would only take that like a partial grade down because it's one of those things that's – a little bit too easy to say in hindsight. It's like a pretty like multi-fold move. Um, I also don't quite like what could, I mean, what, what do you guys think the logic of going Venice to Trieste is? Well, he, he, 
he figured that Austria is going to take Tyrolia, so it's just mm -hmm. Venice safe. It's kind of like a reverse hedge. I don't mark. understand about Italy is right. Yeah, I guess help, you're right. Help me understand this. This is why I thought England might be throwing to him. He may have made a guess that London would be moving to north. But even still, he's definitely got Liverpool, but he, but he could have cut all the supports. He, he, you know, he could have cut Pickard, he cut Paris, cut Burgundy, and, and he'd be okay in Brest. Maybe he wouldn't have it in the fall, and he was worried about England. So I don't know. Uh, I find Italy's chances to be very small without England throwing. Like we said, that's why I was rooting for it. Well, it was a one-fold thinking, right? So what, what he thought was move the opponent will move for position in the spring and centers in the fall. So he th probably thought that Germany might push Gascony. That's what I think. So he thought Germany might push Gascony so he could still block him out of breast and get Wales. That, that would be my guess. But the thing is that, again, like you can't at this point in the finals and with this level of opponents, one-fold thinking isn't going to work. So, yeah, I might have – I hope that I might have supported into Burgundy, but I don't know. I don't know if I would have – it would have been cool. That He could have almost – that would have been really put him on the edge of winning if he could have done that and taken Paris. Um, I, yeah, I think all in all, I'm going to give him a – his diplomatic situation is very good. Um, yeah, I'll give him a – what did you what did you give him, Keith? I haven't given him one yet, but I'm gonna give him a B just because I don't think I would have given Turkey Greece until the fall where I would see it was necessary for a tiebreaker. Because I would have turned for it myself. It would have just been a much better play. Oh, I disagree with that because he has the opportunity to push Turkey back out if he can get Austria. Because now Austria hates Turkey. So Austria might be willing to throw and break Bulgaria. Um, I'm going to give him an A minus. The only thing I don't, I kind of, I think the one fold thinking in France is a little bit of a blemish, but yeah, I'll give him an A minus. I think holding's way easier than begging someone for support. So B plus. I debated this for a bit. I, I give him a B, but I think there's more to be played out with the Italy situation, not just for ratings, uh, which are phenomenal and off the charts. We've got the highest ratings. We're as highly rated as The Apprentice. But <laughs> uh, a long time ago, Hand, you mentioned this, right? Who's the person who first saved Comp? And that was Italy. Mm-hmm. Didn't screw him over. First saved him. <laughs> then saved him again by putting him into Greece. Then Austria sort of took over and, and helped. I'm not 100% convinced that Italy will not be in Greece and maybe Trieste. I'm not saying Austria will give it to him, but the fleet in Albania... I mean, Conk yeah. Con could pull him into Greece. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's possible. I just, well, I think he'll play both. He has to rely on diplomacy at this point. There's, there's not a lot you can do on your own. He has I'll, that one out. I'm going to say, I think I will say Italy will be in Greece. I'm going to say it because look at the situation. Austria just had its guts ripped out by Turkey, probably just wants Turkey to hurt now. That's just, I don't know him very well, so perhaps he has a different way of thinking. And Turkey, I mean, and the Ottomans, you know, they don't really have a fine bottle of hatred for, you know, Italy to uncork. So he probably will appeal to both sides. I could see them both helping him into Greece you know, um, I think he'll take Greece. Uh, England, England's the big question. Um, you do make a good point that there is Germany's the one with the original sin against England because England was about to go up three centers 
they had a great partnership going. They could have rolled the board if they stick together. I know that, uh, Ed, I know that you're just like taking victory laps about how great Germany's stab was. Um, though it is interesting, Ed, you know, it's funny doing a podcast, you learn a lot about other players. Like Ed's like this really nice, humble guy. Have you noticed this, Keith? He's this really nice, humble guy, but as you get to the end, like the ego just comes out and you just realize he's like a monster. I just want our listeners to know that like today in our private chat, he like was calling me a pussy, uh, all this kind of, all this just uncalled for stuff, wow. just like, wow. I was really, I was like, who is this guy? Um, but anyway, like not, not to, uh, you know, not to get derailed there. Um, I did that by yeah, the way, I, only for the benefit of the show. Right. To shame you into coming on. <laughs> But yeah, even even if you give him Greece and give him Liverpool, he either has to pick up another center, which means you know forcing Trieste or getting some weird convoy into Portugal, um, or London, or just help in the breast to get that eye. I mean, it really depends yeah. on England. Yeah, I just see him one yeah. ten. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's ask this. Help me understand Austria here. We under, I understand what happened with Conk. He trusted him. We let him live. In his mind, he made amends. He didn't estimate Dark, Conk's dungeon of resentment. But I'm curious about the move to Tyrolia. Why? Well, Germany wasn't going to help Italy get into Trieste. Right. Italy wasn't going to help Tyrolia get into Trieste. And I don't understand the importance of Tyrolia to Austria at this moment. Because he can either force Venice as the last center or Munich, depending on if he left something uncovered. If yeah. If he to do that, wouldn't he have he supported Serbia to Trieste? No. Because he didn't know that Tyrolia would be moving out. I mean, all indications would seem that Tyrolia may not move at all, or if it does, it would be in a in a bounce like it did last year, not a support out with Warsaw. I mean, that's one of the reasons why once I realized that uh, Italy did a reverse hedgehog, as you put it, Keith. Uh, surprised you guys give Italy a pretty low grade because that was pretty good anticipation on this part. Yeah, I just don't yeah, why, yeah. I thought, you know, if you really want to put it to Austria, you do it in the last year and you're like, well, I need this for the tiebreaker because right now it's more important for you to have Greece. Yeah. Because he could have had it. Yeah, I think he could have. Am I right? The orders were Greece cut Albania. Yep. The thinking Trieste. Albania would support Venice to Trieste. I think he mm -hmm. had to assume that Trieste would have bounced, so I don't think there was any play on Venice. But I think there was a play on Venice. What do you mean? I mean, it, it was a shot play, in the dark. To have a play on Venice, Austria would have to be in Tyrolia and Trieste. Right, and he tried. And he tried. Wait, uh, okay, but like it seems if that was your goal, the better move would have been Vienna supports Bohemia to Tyrolia. Uh, I think he wanted to keep his options open against both Germany and Italy. And he wants to keep pressure on Russia because he still needs that one, one center. I mean, I guess we're coming to Austria's grade and what you're kind of getting at is that Austria's moves weren't entirely optimal here. Yeah, but even Ed said, if he can get into Silesia, he's got two Russian centers. So I think that was, I think he had to go for everything he possibly could and try to get Warsaw, Moscow, and maybe Venice. Yeah. He had to really go for it, and he had to trust Turkey not to do anything. Yeah. Yeah. And that's his only play, and I think he did it pretty well. He shot his shot, yeah. He shot his shot. Shot his shot. But the problem is that everyone knows that that's what he has to do. So, well, then in that case, I think it's just a more, I hate to be like this, but I think it was a higher 
value play to move Vienna to Tyrolia. Yeah, I can say that in hindsight, but what is Vienna needed for? That's true. Vienna is a bit of a waste there. Yeah, that would have been, that might have been a better move. And then he could have maybe evacuated Greece or something. Yeah, Vienna is a bit of a Vienna is a bit of a wasted wasted army, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, that is a blemish. I don't so, blame him for Silesia. Yeah. Although I, I can back up and use Serbia to protect Greece, or even bounce Bulgaria. <clears throat> well, I mean, he could have lost Trieste. To you could have lost yes. And it would have been okay. Hmm. Not really. Well, you're right. Yeah. All right. I want I want to step too far. A little a little bit yeah. there. All yeah. right. I mean I, I really just You're didn't... right. I mean it's not a perfect move. Definitely not. Like it's 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 you know, you can see I can see. I, th I think that there is a little fatigue, and uh, there's a bit of fatigue in in Austria's play. I mean, I'm so sympathetic to these players. You know, uh, well, as we is... mentioned, uh, Ed had to drag me kicking and screaming onto the podcast because I'm so fatigued, and I don't really even play diplomacy anymore. Uh, I mean, I kind of made the comment um, when I was resisting that I hate this game. Um, it's really a little bit too much like life and you just get you just get the waves of just disappointment and drama just beat you down until you just go limp and sink beneath the surface and kind of see that i mean i think italy was fatigued a little earlier and then he's just recovered his virility for one last play but i think austria might be tired a little bit um i still would probably give him like a b i mean you're you He's playing against four people. He can't cover every center. Yeah, yeah. I I still give him a B, but it is it's not a, it's not the greatest move that's for sure. And that, the greatest move is what you needed at this stage. I agree. I'll give him a B. It's an F quintuple quintuple minus. <laughs> Out of the tournament. By definition, he 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 his diplomacy failed. Tactics failed. Ed, do you have any idea how many Austria's number one tidy whities I'm trying to sell here? You're killing me. You're just killing me. Okay. With, with what am I going to do with all this? With five exclamation points after the minuses and a question mark. <laughs> question mark? <laughs> with what the hell? <laughs> Three question marks. Okay, Russian great. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, are we even going to grade Russia? <laughs> Russia did what Russia needed to. It was good. Go I don't think Russia right. loses Moscow. I, I don't think. I think Saint Petersburg will just uh, support it. Yeah. Well, maybe. I I think that Russia. I think I'm right. Russia want. Russia tried to lead a charge against Germany. He wants to be right, and he's making himself right. So, that's his objective. He did well. You know. He's also like dead, so I guess I'll give him like a B or something. When I saw the winter moves, that was the first thing I was thinking of is, will England force Norway for sure? Or will they support, or they, will they try to break the blood in St. Petersburg to make sure that Austria goes up one? But now that Austria doesn't have a chance, I don't think England England's in that dilemma at all. It's all about Norway right now. I grade Russia as irrelevant. Tom's grade. Yeah. <laughs> already irrelevant, but miraculous. <laughs> I thought we already graded him. God, we've given him so many A's. I've just lost track. We've already graded him. That's it. Didn't we? Didn't we? Didn't we grade him? Am I tripping? We haven't graded him. Oh, we haven't. Uh, just another A. Another A. It's an another A. a. What? It's an F. Whoa. <laughs> oh, you're really zagging and we're zigging. He wanted to do it for drama. He should have done it in the fall. 
could have taken Greece. That's fine. But Bulgaria, that had to come in the fall. Well, don't don't sell him short. I mean, he might listen to this and decide that it's – oh, I guess it won't come out in time, but um, he still has room for drama. If he threw to Italy <laughs> – um, if he threw to Italy, that could be dramatic. But uh, – I wanted to see Italy in the Aegean. What? I kind of wanted to see – Italy move Ioni into the Aegean. Oh, so he could really throw centers? Well, he could take Smyrna. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's coming. It's probably yeah. worth the gamble, right? It's You're really going to give him an F? <laughs> no, I'm talking about Turkey. I'm talking about Italy. Have yeah. you ever given Conk an F? Are you guys like, did you guys have a little domestic dispute or something? Like, well, what happened between you two? Because here's the thing. What makes Conk Conk is dramatic flair. Yeah. He got an Austrian discount. That's pretty dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> the spring Jeez. isn't the time for dramatic flair. The fall was the time for dramatic flair. But I guess he was worried about the Austrian retreat. That's just one fold thinking. I think that we still has room for drama. Oh, I really wanted kidding. I really wanted behind the scenes. Us, us. I think he needs to get the drama wherever he can get it. He's running out of time. Yeah, I think I think there's I think we need a behind the scenes of what what happened between Prince Ali and the Sultan here. It's a quintuple plus for Conk. I was just kidding. He's oh, okay. not five, so that's the quintuple plus. That's going to be better than anything Germany's ever done. God, I'm I'm so comforted. I, I was really worried that you might not you know uh, perform fellatio on Conk for one episode. Having said that, I'd really like to see if Italy can get Austria to throw centers and if Conk can be in Romania. I mean, could happen. If Italy gets three powers to throw to him, that will be one of the greatest moments in Nexus Finals history. And I, I would respect that so much. All right, final question. Who will win the Nexus Season 5 Finals? Germany. I just don't see England doing it. Without England, uh, Italy can't get 10. Well, I feel one of those, like, just waves of disappointment and fatalistic, uh, you know, of just, of just fatalism washing over me as I say this. But, yeah, Germany. Who never, ever, ever gave us one drop of entertainment one boast one anything yeah one Germany. good stab and the rest of it was just defensive tactics and slow moving the one and, gave and, us one shuffle from russia to france that was good oh god he's just so unlikable and he's just imm scum too like oh he's unlikable you don't even know him I well he doesn't he give us anything at least boast like you're about to win the game like he gave, us... you, he gave you a guy who didn't that angered England was fighting England, France, and Italy. He got Russia onside. The only guy, you know, he got what he needed when he needed it. It's not flashy. It's not the way, you know, we may not want to see. It's not dramatic flair. You're not selling me on it. Effective. <laughs> You really did not sell me on Germany at all there. Um, well, yeah. how about those 10 centers? Did that, did that sell you? No. We said 10 is what it was going to take to win. Yeah, I said it's going to win. I'm just saying, like, he's one of the, like, least entertaining, you know, winners that you had. But uh, I guess actually all the winners have been somewhat non-entertaining once I think about it. But... but <laughs> Uh, have there been any flashy winners? I guess Power. Power had a pretty flashy, flashy game. Power's yeah. Uh, I don't even remember who won season four now, to be honest with you. Uh, even though I. Pez. Oh, it's Pez. Yeah, that was not a flashy win. He won a tiebreaker. Uh, and he almost lost it. He almost lost it. I mean, I think I was going to give him centers, and he denied it. And I was like, 
If you don't want to win, that's on you. I want to go I mean, flip that maybe in the last turn, England ultimately hates Germany. It may not be enough, though. That would be awesome. That would yeah. be awesome. It's all down to Brest because if Italy loses Brest, it goes down one and Germany goes up one. So it makes Italy have to pick up two more than it already has to. So I'm telling you right now, if Tom pulls that off, I'm getting a bouquet of flowers. It's going to be special flowers because we're in the Pacific Northwest. And I am driving those special flowers to Tom's residence. He doesn't live that far away from me. Um, I'll wear a gas mask or something, whatever. It'll be fine. And I will give him those flowers. Um, All right. Gentlemen, that brings an end to spring 1910 moves. Thank you for everything you've done. We'll come back and we'll do a wrap up show after fall 1910. My prediction is Germany, but I would just for the fun of it, like to see if England changes his mind and throws to Italy. All yeah, right. take it back. Italy only needs England. If England wants to support him to Brest and walk out of London, England can give Italy the game. So that's it. That'd be that's, fun. It's, it's all in the press. England the game. That would be more fun. Let's be honest. That's it. Okay. Good night, guys. Good night.